Virtual memory, virtualization, and containers often unsettle developers because they introduce abstraction layers that obscure direct system control. Unlike physical memory or dedicated hardware, these virtualized environments dynamically allocate resources, making behavior less predictable. For example, virtual memory enables applications to use more memory than physically available, but paging and swapping can cause unexpected slowdowns. Containers promise isolation but rely on shared host OS resources, leading to CPU throttling or out-of-memory killer events. Virtual machines emulate hardware but introduce performance overhead and hypervisor-specific quirks. My goal in this video is to enlighten you about one of those virtual concepts that you may have avoided spending any time learning. And if you've seen the title of this video, you know the concept I'm referring to is virtual memory. Okay, and the best way to start with learning a new concept is with a concrete definition. So virtual memory is a memory management technique that allows an operating system or OS to use disk space to simulate additional RAM or random access memory. It allows a computer to use more memory than is physically available by using a combination of RAM and disk storage. And this enables a computer to run larger programs or multiple applications simultaneously, even if the physical RAM is not sufficient. So at a high level, it provides an abstraction layer between physical memory and the applications, making it appear as though there is more memory available than what is physically installed. But before you understand virtual memory, you first have to understand address space abstraction. Each process is given its own virtual address space, which is independent of the actual physical memory. And the OS mapping these virtual addresses to physical addresses is done using page tables. The concept of address space abstraction segues perfectly into paging and page tables. So memory is divided into small fixed sized pages that are typically four kilobytes or eight kilobytes. And these pages are mapped to frames in physical memory. I always like to think of these concepts in terms of which concepts are virtual and which concepts are physical. So a page is a virtual memory concept, which is why it's also known as a virtual page. And it's a fixed length contiguous block of virtual memory that is mapped to physical memory frames. And frames are a physical memory concept. These frames are also fixed size blocks of RAM. And the page table keeps track of where each virtual page is stored. When a process needs more memory than is available in RAM, some pages are stored on the hard disk in a special area called the swap space or page file. If the required page is already in RAM, the CPU can access it directly. Otherwise, a page fault occurs. So a page fault occurs when a program requests data that is not in RAM. The OS will swap a page from the disk's swap space into RAM. And then there's the concept of page replacement. So when the RAM is full, the OS selects less frequently used pages to be moved back to disk using algorithms like LRU, or at least recently used, or FIFO, or first in, first out. And this allows more important data to remain in fast memory. Notice how we're leveraging a concept called demand paging, where pages are loaded into RAM only when needed, reducing the initial load time. This does improve memory efficiency, but may cause page thrashing or excessive swapping. And thrashing happens when page faults become extremely frequent, and the system spends most of its time swapping pages in and out of memory instead of running applications. If you are interested in taking your software engineering skills to the next level, I would encourage you to build projects. I'm not talking about going down the rabbit hole of tutorial hell and building a to-do list, calculator, or weather app. I'm talking about building complex real-world projects beyond the basics. And this is where CodeCrafters comes in. This platform provides interactive tools to build developer tooling from scratch. There are a number of courses that teach building Git from scratch, building an in-memory Redis database, an HTTP web server, your own Docker, your own DNS server, and many others. I personally love that there is built-in support for over 20 different languages. My favorite, of course, is Golang, but I would highly recommend trying a newer language like Zig as well. I'm excited to announce that I'm partnering with CodeCrafters to offer all my viewers 40% off. For more details, you can find a link in the description down below as well as the pinned comment. You may have heard of the TLB, or the Translation Look-Aside Buffer. And at its core, this is just a hardware cache. It stores recent virtual to physical address translations. And it helps speed up memory accesses by reducing page table lookups. Okay, let's take a step back. Why do we even use virtual memory in the first place? Why don't we just use physical memory for everything? 
The first advantage is that it allows us to run very large applications because programs can use more memory than what is physically available. There's also multitasking support because multiple applications can run simultaneously without worrying about available RAM. An added benefit is memory isolation. Each process gets its own memory space, preventing one program from interfering with another. And finally, you get efficient memory use because unused memory sections can be swapped out to disk, which frees up RAM for active processes. But this doesn't come without disadvantages. You have slower performance because accessing data from disk or the swap space is significantly slower than accessing RAM. You also have page fault overhead, where frequent page faults can lead to thrashing where the system spends more time swapping pages than executing processes. And the last one is increased wear and tear on SSDs or solid state drives. Excessive swapping can reduce the lifespan of these SSDs, and if you're not familiar with SSDs, these are non-volatile storage devices that use flash memory chips instead of mechanical parts like spinning disks and read-write heads, which are more commonly found in traditional hard disk drives or HDDs. It's always easiest to reason about a new concept with a real-world example. So imagine you're running a web browser with multiple tabs open while also editing a document and watching a video on YouTube. Even if your system has 8 gigabytes of RAM, the total required memory might exceed this, and virtual memory ensures that inactive tabs and background processes are moved to disk, allowing your active applications to run smoothly. The TLDR is that virtual memory is a very critical feature of modern OSs, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and it's what allows users to run multiple programs simultaneously and experience this very efficient memory management. If you learned something new in this video today, I would highly recommend you subscribe to this channel for more future updates, as well as give this video a like. As always, thank you very much for watching this video, and happy coding!